Right, boys, thanks for joining me. Episode four, current MMA Plus. Let's keep it real. I'm getting straight into it. Elliot, what were you saying? Right last weekend's card out of 10. Yeah, it must be a one. No, a two, because we had one finish. Let's give it a two. A two out of 10. What do you Jake? Yeah, I got to agree. Got to agree on a Maybe a strong three. Strong three, if there's <laughs> such a thing. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't like to be that person who says that decisions are boring because obviously that's not always the case. We've seen lots of good decisions. We've just seen Gaethje Chandler and Rose Zhang, like lots and lots, you know, Usman Kov and lots and lots of good fights out of decisions, but this card just didn't really have many of them. Definitely not enough of them. Um, general thoughts, uh, what do you take away from that card? Start with you, Elliot. Is there anything where you come away from that card and think, oh, I'm glad I watched it because of this person or this person's going to go on and do this. Is there anything that you really took away from that or was it just a complete dud? Um, no, it wasn't inherently bad. I thought Sean Brady looked okay. I mm-hmm. thought there's a talking point around him and I thought it's good to see um, Adrian Yanez fight as well. Um, it's always exciting to see him and especially in that kind of um, environment against uh, someone crazy like uh, David Grant. I thought even though it was a decision, it was actually quite a fun fight. So mm-hmm. yeah, it's always fun to see Yanez and I think it'll be a big one for the future. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it was, a, it was a close one. I mean, we'll, we'll touch back on that one shortly. Uh, but Jake, let's start with you for the main event. Uh, Ketlin Vieira versus Misha Tate. First of all, your thoughts on that fight. And second of all, I mean, I watched the fight on mute and I didn't think that there was any debate just from how I was watching it. But then apparently online there was some debate and I think Daniel Cormier might have said that he thought Misha Tate was in the run to win it. I didn't see it as being that competitive. Um, what did you think about the fight, Jake? And, and were you happy with the decision? No, it was definitely the right decision. I feel like that's what the way they feel these American commentators sometimes come across, don't they? And maybe favour Misha Tate in, in some ways. But the arrow just completely outstruck her, I think, in terms of power. And I don't think Tate is weird for me. I feel like she was, I don't know what it was, but I don't feel like she looked right in there. And, she really struggled with her takedowns, didn't she? So I think, yeah, Vieira was powerful and you could see that at the end of the fight when Vieira didn't even have a scratch on it and Tate looked pretty mashed up, to be honest. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, it seemed like a a little bit of a weird uh, approach from Tate, I thought. It sort of, it wasn't quite the same, but it reminded me a little bit of when BJ Penn came out and tried to fight Frankie Edgar in a different way, came out with a different stance and things and just didn't look himself. It was... I don't know, it just seemed a bit odd, especially for someone like Misha, who was pretty confident, felt like she was on this comeback, and then she just she just seemed to approach it a bit strangely. What do you think, Elliot? Were you happy with the decision? Yeah, I thought it makes sense. And um, especially with, like we, we talk, spoke about the uh, the cuts and the bruises on um, uh, Vieira's face. I mean, damage is not everything, but if, if someone does think it's tight, you can look at that and I think, let's compare it. I mean, Tate was wearing it badly, I thought. Yeah, 100%. Um, so, quick one for Vieira then, since she's our winner. Start with you on this one, Elliot. What do you think could be next for her? Um, and I guess an easier question is, are you interested at all at this point in Vieira versus Amanda Nunes? Not really one bit, not really. Um, no. I think Aspen Ladd maybe makes sense. Let's give her a few more challenges before she even thinks about title title fight. I mean, let's remember how crazy Nunes is, really. I think it's a bit silly when we start talking about when someone's like seventh, eighth kind of position and talk, thinking about Nunes. She's so dominant. I just It doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, no, I agree with that. Espen Lad's a good shout. Obviously, it depends. I'm not really sure at the minute which weight class she's going to fight at. She seems to be flickering. Obviously, missed weight up and went to feather, but then she sounds like she wants to bounce back down. So we'll see what happens with her. But definitely a good shout. Uh, Jake, what do you think? Any chance of fighting Amanda Nunes anytime soon or take, take a step back before then? No, 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 no chance soon. I think I think there's more chance of her fighting uh, Juliana Pena when, say, eventually next uh, month when they fight. I can only see Nunes winning that fight. So I think there's more realistic chance of her fighting her maybe next year. She's ranked, I think, fourth. Vieira's only seventh. And one place above her is that Konetsuki who beat her last fight, uh, beat Vieira last fight. So it's tough to call in that division right now. I, I, I don't see who who really challenges Nunes. So, no, I don't I don't know what's going to be up next for Vieira. Jake, are you assuming that Amanda Nunes is going to beat Juliana Pena? <laughs> I am assuming. I I have very strongly favoured her in that fight, so... <laughs> <Fair> <laughs> don't we all? 
Yeah, no, you can't argue with that. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess we move along from that one because there wasn't a huge amount of takeaways from it. I think we can all agree that if Misha Tate put on an impressive performance, I'm sure the UFC would have been pushing for that Tate versus Nunes fight just because there's not yeah. a lot of other options. And that probably would have been the big talking point from the weekend. And that's what it seemed to be geared around and what they were hoping for. That's I think that's why the commentators were sort of pushing Tate a little bit, but didn't happen. Solid performance from Vieira, but nothing that's going to get anyone too excited. Um, yeah, I guess we move on from that one. Um, Michael Chiesa versus Sean Brady. Elliot, you touched on this one a little bit, so I'll start with you. Um, first of all, just general thoughts. Let's, let's start with Sean Brady since he's our winner. What do you think is him of him? Because obviously that was a pretty big step up for him um, in his youngish career. What did you think about Sean Brady's performance? Um, yeah, it was really good. It's really interesting to see how great his grappling really was. Um, I thought he fought uh, Chiesa at a, a good moment in his in his life, uh, obviously coming off the loss against uh, Sinte Luque. But uh, nonetheless, I thought it looked it looked quite good. Yeah, decision's not the greatest thing in the world, but hey, you can't moan at it. Um, maybe his cardio may, might need to improve a little bit because towards the end, it looked like there was a chance it could be going out. But no, apart from that, no, Brady looked okay. I thought, it, yeah, apart from the decision, he done well. Yeah, absolutely. Jake, do you agree? And, and what might you want to see next from Sean Brady? What do you think makes sense for him? Well, his call-out was Bilal or Wonderboy. I think that completely makes sense, really, because we're going to probably see Brady jump to, to jump to sixth place in the rankings and then Wonderboy is obviously fifth. I think that fight makes sense. Um, I don't know who's going to come out on top out of Bilal Wonderboy, but I would love to see... Him fight comes at though at the same time because I think two undefeated fighters everyone loves to see that and who doesn't want to see two undefeated fighters compete for their zero really so yeah I I think he's game for anyone really but as Casey said he's clearly strong as they said mentioned in the fight mm. oh you're really Paul Felder said you're really strong or whatever he said mm. and to outstrength someone as tall as Kiesa you clearly have to be very strong to be in there. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting one. I think the UFC will probably change the mind based on who wins that Bilal versus Wonderboy fight, I feel, because I think Bilal Muhammad versus Kamzat Shemaev, I think, you know, unless Bilal puts on a really good performance and gets a bit of hype around him, but I feel like the Wonderboy fight's a much better name for him. And the Sean Brady one, I think that's a much easier sell as well because, because of that zero, because that undefeated, you say undefeated versus undefeated and that's a good sell um Bilal Muhammad I'm not really sure he sits in a bit of an awkward position since that Leon fight he's you know he's on a pretty strong undefeated run if he beats Wonderboy but I don't know he's, he's a bit like Leon where nobody's too bothered about him so I'm not really sure what happens with him to be honest but yeah I could see I could see any of them fighting each other to be fair so it's going to be interesting and don't have to wait too long to find out who wins between Bilal and Wonderboy. That's happening next month. So um, I guess it just depends how quickly comes that wants to fight again as well and who's willing to fight him pretty soon. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Um, what do we think? We'll, we'll quickly touch on Michael Chiesa. Uh, we start with you, Elliot. What do you think of him? You know, I touched last week. I said that I felt like his confidence was a bit low from time to time. Um, he didn't look bad. He just looked a bit outclassed. But, you know, he's a fighter who it was only about, Six to nine months ago, I think, where Ali Abdelaziz said that they might throw him a bone and have him fight Usman just because there wasn't many people on a win streak in that division. And he was one of them who'd strung a few wins together. So to go from that to now, you know, back-to-back losses, and it feels like he's just not even a top-10 fighter at the minute. What do you feel about Kiesa at the minute? Do you still rate him as a contender, or do you think he's maybe a bit past it? Uh, contender, no. But, I mean, he deserves his ranking, his top-10 ranking. And I thought... Maybe if he changed his approach a little bit, practice his striking a little bit. I mean, it's kind of crazy to say that about a UFC fighter, but he's not had a single uh, TKO or KO finish in his professional career. That, that was his chance because Brady was almost like almost out of it. And I thought if he had a bit of like striking um, kind of background around him, he could he could have really put him away. Mm. I thought that was crazy to me. I thought any, any other fighter might have really given it a go, but. Um, take some time off and maybe change the game plan up a little bit, get your confidence back because you don't want to keep going uh, keep going and going when you're uh, on a bit of a losing streak because we saw that with Woodley. I mean, he really got dominated towards the end. 
Yeah, hundred percent. Do you agree, Jake? Do you think uh, Kessa needs to change things up, or do you think he's maybe just come up against a couple of guys who are better than him? No, I totally agree. His striking just is now like we've seen him. We've seen them touch gloves so many times that fight. They just didn't know what to do. And like you say, Brady, the chance was there to take advantage of Brady, but he just couldn't do anything on the feet. And we've seen him outclass the likes of Magny and stuff like that before. And he did really look threatening, but now when he's come up against these bigger guys, he just fell short. So, yeah, I think he deserves to be top 10, but contender nowhere near at the minute. Yeah, fair enough. Um, Other fights to mention, we touched at the start where it wasn't the best card, so... We're probably not really fighting for position to see, you know, who's going to pick what fight or there's not much guesswork. I think I'm, you know, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that everybody's going to say Adrian Yanez versus David Grant is probably the other fight to mention on this card. Has anybody, anybody got anything else? I, I think um mention is definitely for uh, Laputa Godinez. So she competed in her third fight in 43 days, which is like the UFC record, isn't it now? So that's like an outstanding thing. And we've all yeah. seen her put in a good performance. But if I were to definitely fight again before the end of the year to try and get herself bigger in the UFC, and if she fights again and wins again, that definitely puts her in a good place in the UFC and in the flyweight division. So yeah, she definitely deserves a shout. 100%. I mean, we've got all these people who complain about fighter pain, and I'm all for it. But if you want to make more money, you can fight more often. That's one way to do yeah. it. So, yeah. Um, Elliot, any other mentions for you on the card? Um, Giannis. I thought Giannis just st- stole the show, to be honest. Yeah, yeah 100%. I mean, it's uh, commiserations to David Grant. I think he, he put up a good fight and he, he clearly wasn't too happy um, with the result. I think he thought that he might have edged it. Um I wouldn't have said it was a robbery if David Grant got it, but I think everyone feels like Giannis uh, sort of got the better of him in that one. But definitely shows that them two are, are up there. And that's what we want to see from Giannis as well, that bit of step up in competition, someone who wouldn't go away easy. Um, and we got to see a lot more of him. And obviously off the back of that, Sean O'Malley's called out Adrian Giannis. Uh, Jake, I'll start with you. First of all, how sincere do we think Sean O'Malley's being? And second of all, do you have any predictions for that fight? Um, predictions are tough because I think he's got he's got Rowley and Paver first. He put in an incredible performance against Kyler Phillips, so he's got to get past him first. And I think he's really mm-hmm. ruling him out if he's calling Alice for March. That is just such a predictable fight, though, because I they're both such good strikers. Uh, I don't have a clue on that one. <laughs> I really <laughs> don't know who can win. That. But yeah, I'd love to see it, though. It would be one of the fights everyone wants to see really in that division yeah 100 percent. do you agree elliot um yeah sean o'malley versus yanis would be a great fight i thought um yanis looked particularly um calculated against grant so that might be a bit of a problem for o'malley who's um i think o'malley's pretty pretty wild i think it's fair to say um i mean still amazing amazing striking i think it'd be his biggest test as well be, i think the fa- uh, a match would be fantastic and that could really um could headline a uh like a, uh, not a pay per view, but a fight night certainly. Mm. Yeah, well, while he's got a weird way of doing things, he's he's obviously um, you know he's not really fighting many ranked opponents, and he said a couple of times in the media, "Well, if you want me to fight ranked opponents, and I'll get paid more. Until then, I'll I'll just fight whoever." And then he's got his first ranked opponent. He's going to fight him soon, and then he's he's already calling out Yanez, who's unranked again. So he sort of wants to take a step forward and take a step back. He's I don't know. He obviously must see something in Yanis that he likes. Um, you know, whether that's a stylistic thing, he's watching him fight and think, oh, I can just knock that guy out, so I'll just fight him. I, I'm not sure. He's he's um, he's interesting, but I'd also like to see O'Malley move, you know, have a bit more ambition to move up the rankings a little bit, um, personally anyway. But yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens with that one. Definitely be a fun fight, but, you know, you can't just keep having fun fights all your life. Let's, uh, let's start... Getting yourself up the rank in severe, apparently undefeated. <laughs> Definitely. Um, so we'll move on to news this week because obviously there's no card in this coming weekend, having a bit of a week off. A few stack cards after that, which we'll get into in the coming weeks. Um, but there's just a few news stories that we'll touch upon um, and then we'll get out of here. So first up, Darren Till. Um, he's been on the Believe You Me podcast with Michael Bisbin. Obviously, he's coming off the back of that last to Derek Brunson. 
I, if I try to remember right now, I probably couldn't even remember how many injuries Darren Till's had. He's, he's had the, apparently his ACL, he had his collarbone, um, you know, he's had lots of issues. He said he wants to come back for March, which is apparently when that UFC London card will be. Um, Elliot, I'll start with you. There's been a couple of names floated about. Is there anyone you particular would like to see Darren Till come back and face um, in March? Uh, Sean Strickland, I think kind of makes sense. Mm. I think that's the one a lot of people kind of spoken about already as well. And I think that would bring out the best of Till. It's just a bit of stand-up kind of war. And it, uh, there will be beef involved. I think there will be a bit of back and forth. And I thought that'd be the best way to get Till back into in, into the headlight, you know? Yeah. No, I like that one. What about you, Jake? No, I agree with Strickland, yeah. Um, he has ruled himself out, I think. He said a fight in Till, but I could see if, if we had a London card in March, like that suits Strickland mm. to come over to London and be a bit of a home wrecker. That's the what he likes to be. I think realistically, the best chance of him winning would be Uriah Hall, and Uriah Hall does want to fight him. But mm. I think if he the best win for him would be Strickland to get his name and push himself back up there. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree with that. Yeah, I think they're both winnable fights for him. I think another one can't really tell where he's at, at the minute, but another one would be Luke Rockhold as well. Obviously, Rockhold was supposed to fight Strickland, former champ. I think that'd be pretty decent trash talk as well. Obviously, he's a good name for being a champion. So, yeah, I think there's a few good fights for Till. Um, and obviously, the thing that those three that we just mentioned have in common is they're all strikers. And, you know, we can obviously all agree that Till can probably pretty much outstrike most people. His weakness is going to be the wrestling and things like that. So, yeah, I think there's a, there's plenty of winnable fights for him, plenty of exciting fights. Um, hopefully, get him on that London card and I'll see you there. But um, next one, obviously, he's never out the headlines, Conor McGregor. There's a few things I could have picked out for this one. I don't want to talk about Conor too much, so I just picked one out. He's been tweeting plenty, as always. But one of the things that he did say is that his next fight is going to be for the lightweight title, whoever that may be. I think he's probably presuming that it's going to be Justin Poirier, and that's why he's saying that. He's sort of lining up that fourth fight. Elliot, I'll start with you. True or false, Conor McGregor's next fight is for the lightweight title. So, so false. It's just not <laughs> happening. Let's be honest <laughs> with ourselves. I would like, like to see him take a different route. I think um, Chell talked about it before, Chell Sonnen on his podcast, and about let's not, why not fight Jorge Masvidal at a higher weight, 170. He said he enjoyed it at 170. Or, or Diaz again. The, the money fights, but I suppose the competitor in uh, McGregor wants to be up there all the time. But hey, not a title fight, but why not around that kind of uh, ranking? Chandler, Gaethje. Really fun fights, really. Yeah. What do you think, Jay? Conor McGregor, lightweight title shot coming up next? I don't think so, but I think if Paul is champion, it gives us a slim, slim chance because mm-hmm. of obviously that trilogy fight. But uh, you don't doesn't think he might be back till around June. I think he might have said anyway. I think there's a chance of another fight after this one in December in between them. So if it is, I don't know who will be champion, plus Poirier or Oliveira. But I, he, I know he's the biggest name in the UFC, but he really, I don't know if he can jump that queue. He's ranked about ninth. <laughs> I think it would be an uproar. A lot of fans don't like McGregor, so I think there would be a bit of an uproar if he got given that shot ahead of the likes of Gaethje, Dariush and Makachev. Yeah, there'd be an uproar, but everyone would watch it. So that's, that's the main oh, thing. I, the I, I, I'd <laughs> love it. I'd love it, but <laughs> I think a lot of people would really hate it. Yeah, and I mean, if he does fight for the title next, coming off that leg break and he loses that one, which is obviously oh, yeah. pretty possible. I mean, what is like lightweight record going to be? Is it going to be about one and four, one and five? So it's yeah. uh, it's a tough sell, but we'll see what happens. It's Connor. If anybody can do it, it's him. He fought yeah. Floyd Mayweather for Christ's sake, so you never know. Um, moving on from Connor, Kobe Covington's obviously bounced back into the media. He put his real character on for a bit after the Usman fight. It was pretty nice to him. Said it's all love. I when I immediately watched that Kobe Covington Kamaru Usman two fight, I thought it was relatively close. I was obviously, you know, I agree that Usman won, but I thought it was close enough for Kobe to uh, do Kobe and say that he got robbed and try and play off that. But he didn't seem in the mood straight after the fight, so it kept quiet, took his licks. But now he's he is trying to say that now, which I thought might come out. So Kobe Covington saying that out of the 
10 rounds at the fort. He's won six or seven of them or whatever he's saying. And, and you know, he thinks that fight is a robbery and then he'd have a trilogy. Elliot, we'll start with you. First of all, is there any interest in that trilogy? Um, and is there any truth to what Kobe's saying? Um, a trilogy? I wouldn't mind it, but I'm sure a lot of the fans would have a lot to say about it. If we see Colby kind of dominate his next few opponents, I mean, why not? It's the closest Usman's going to get to a, a tough competition, apart from mm-hmm. Shemaev, we don't know yet. But I also thought this would have been the perfect time for Colby to kind of give up his act. It, do- it doesn't need to. He's kind of won the fans over for having like two close fights with Usman. But hey, like you can't stop him. He's a mach- he's a, a, like a XPR machine, if you want to kind of see it that way. Yeah, I mean, if it wasn't for the character, he probably would have been cut by now. So it's, it's too, probably too late for him to let go. But he's, as soon as yeah. he stops the UFC, he'll be like, get yourself off to Bellator. But, um, <laughs> what about you, Jakey? Any interest in that trilogy? Um, yeah, maybe down the line. Like I said, he asked if he could dominate the next two opponent, opponents, like uh, Mars Vidal and Shemaev. A win over Mars Vidal is not enough to get mm-hmm. another title. I think he knows he didn't win that fight. That's why he did show a bit of respect at the end, because I think he knows he didn't win that fight. And he, he has to do it. He has to keep up his personality to keep... It's not like he's not talented, but that's the way people do it. That's why, like, Chael Sonnen stays so famous now, because he keeps a big mouth of his. And Yeah, I, not for now, but yeah, maybe he is. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, Steve, me your chicks come back into the, the spotlight a little bit. We don't hear a lot from Steve Bear, doesn't do a lot of media. And obviously he's been pretty quiet since his last fight with Nagano when he lost his belt. Um, I'll keep this question pretty straightforward. Steve Bear spoke to Ariel Hawani and he said that obviously he wants the Nagano fight next, but he'd be willing to fight John Jones. So I'll keep it simple. We'll start with you, Elliot. Would you rather you see Steve Bear, Nagano free next or Steve Bear versus John Jones? Um, John Jones. Because we can kind of make that sooner because if Ngannou's fighting uh, Garno soon, mm-hmm. I mean, we're going to have to wait a little bit longer. Let's let's put John, John Jones in there as soon as possible. Fair enough. Who wins that one? Putting you on the spot. <laughs> I'll probably say jo- Jones now. If you asked me before the Ngannou fight, I'd probably, just, probably say Stipe. Yeah, fair enough. What about you, Jake? You'd rather see Stipe versus Jones or Stipe versus Ngannou free? Uh, it's gonna be Steve Jones, yeah. I don't know what Jones is gonna be like at heavyweight though. Like he's so big, it might be harder for him to move. Mm. I don't know, but I would rather see it because it could be sooner, yeah. But I don't know how soon it'll be. And I don't think Jones is gonna want that, fight, but I don't know. I think it's gonna be Jones and Garnet. Well, I don't know actually because I don't know if Garnet is gonna beat Garnet. So I don't know. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, lots of questions. Uh, no, fair enough, fair enough. I think you know, one thing we can all agree on is that any of them fights, we'd all be very excited for. So it's a pretty good time for the heavyweight division because there has been times when it's not been at its best. It's not been the most exciting. There's maybe just been a couple of people at the top. Um, but I'd, I'd probably say that this is the best state the heavyweight division's been in the UFC for a very long time. So it's all good stuff. John Jones in the mix, it's good. Um, last one I'll leave you is with. Uh, springing this one on you a little bit late because, you know, it's obviously only just recently came out. But Dan Hooker, he's pretty much confirmed that he's moving down to the, the featherweight division, back to 145. Um, he told Oscar Willis that he'd be doing a test cut and then he's posted early this morning, uh, depending on what time zone you're on, that he's officially made weight. He weighed in on a scale about 146 or a bit less. So he looks good to go at featherweight. Uh, Elliot, we'll start with you. You know, just... How do you feel about that? And do you think it's a good move? Yeah, I'm, I'm so happy he's gone down a weight because I thought the matchups for him at lightweight, it doesn't help his career. Go down to go down to featherweight, there's so many possibilities. It kind of gives Holloway another like avenue to go down. I know um, Hooker hasn't kind of deserved it yet, but at least it's something to look forward to in the future. I mean, yeah, Hooker at uh, featherweight is such a such a better idea than lightweight for me anyway. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think looking at those some of them recent fights against Islam and things, um, Chanley just seems he seems a bit out muscled. Obviously, he's quite a big guy, but he's not a physical guy. And with striking being his, his sort of um, you know his, his area of expertise and grappling not being, it doesn't board well when you're uh, you know 
the physicality doesn't match up against some of these wrestlers. So I agree. I think Featherweight's a good move. I think there's lots, lots better matchups for him. Lots more strikers in that division as well. Like, yeah, obviously he's already fought a couple of them, but yeah, yeah, Rodriguez is Korean zombies. Some, you know, Giga Chikadze, some really fun fights there and people will stand with him. But Jake, what do you think? You're happy with that move? Yeah, I think it's probably the best decision he's made. I know he started at Featherweight, in uh, the UFC and he did struggle there a bit but obviously it's he's come so far since then he's fought some amazing fighters in, in the lightweight division and like like Elliot said that Holloway fight would be off the scale I think so definitely yeah absolutely right nice one boys well as we said no, no UFC to look forward to this weekend um, but we'll still be back every week chatting about this stuff and uh, after this little break, there's some absolutely stacked cards. We've got Jose Aldo, Rob Font. Obviously, we've got the big UFC 269. Tons and tons of good fights. So looking forward to talking about them. Um, but cheers for joining me and looking forward to doing it again. Thank cheers, you. lads. Nice one, boys. Sweet. Um... <laughs> He's lost me. Can you hear Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's his internet. It looks like he's still moving. He's like blinking, but... <laughs> I think we might have lost him. <laughs> well, I'm here, boys. Is that all right um, now? Can you hear me, yeah? Yeah. Oh, it keeps on messing up every now and then, but... So, um, okay. Yeah. Um, I'll, uh, do you want me to yeah. ask it again? Yeah, go for it. Right. What did I say again? <laughs> right, I'll tell you what. I might... I'm not trying to connect to the internet uh, through my phone because I think my connection is messing up a lot. Yeah, do I? Have to do that. Yeah, yeah. Just I'll cut it out. It's fine. I might have to end the call and come back if that's all right. No worries. Let's check the man you score while he sorts his life out. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, let me lose. <laughs> he was playing tomorrow yeah Porto but we're already topped it so it's kind of pointless <clears throat> yeah you should just rest everyone I don't think they will though because apparently they get 2.5 million if they win a game so like you know oh, what right. it is all bloody money isn't it so yeah Porto will be going for that as well because Probably expect yeah. Atletico to win, so. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it should be a little bit better now. Look beautiful. Yeah, sorry about that. That's all right. Uh, yeah, so Jake was just saying... Um, Adrian Yanez and uh, Sean O'Malley would be a good fight and he does know how to pick for it. Um, and then I think I said, do you agree? <laughs> okay. Um, so we'll just start it from now, yeah? Yeah, go for it. I'll just chop it up. Okay. Um, yeah, Sean O'Malley versus Yanez would be a great fight. I thought um, Yanez looked particularly um, calculated against Grant, so that might be a bit of a problem for O'Malley, who's, um, I think O'Malley's pretty pretty wild. I think it's fair to say. Um, I mean, still amazing, amazing striking. I think it'd be his biggest test as well. Be, I think the fa- uh, a match would be fantastic, and that could really um, could headline a, uh, like a uh, not a pay per view, but a fight night certainly. Mm. Yeah, well, while he's got a weird way of doing things, he's he's obviously um, you know he's not really fighting many ranked opponents, and he said a couple of times in the media, "Well, if you want me to fight ranked opponents, then I'll get paid more. Until then, I'll I'll just fight whoever." And then he's got his first ranked opponent. He's gonna fight him soon, and then he's he's already calling out Yanez, who's unranked again. So he sort of wants to take a step forward and take a step back. He's, I don't know. He obviously must see something in Yanez that he likes. Um, you know whether that's a stylistic thing. He's watching fight and think, oh, I can just knock that guy out, so I'll just fight him. I, I'm not sure. He's he's um he's interesting, but I'd also like to see O'Malley move. You know, have a bit more ambition to move up the rankings a little bit. Um. Personally, anyway, but yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. With that one definitely be a fun fight, but you know, you, you can't just keep having fun fights all your life. Let's uh, let's start 
getting yourself up the rankings if you're apparently undefeated. <laughs> Definitely. Um, so we'll move on to news this week because obviously there's no card in this coming weekend, having a bit of a week off. A few stack cards after that, which we'll get into in the coming weeks. Um, but there's just a few news stories that we'll touch upon um, and then we'll get out of here. So first up, Darren Till. Um, he's been on the Believe You Me podcast with Michael Bisbin. Obviously, he's coming off the back of that last to Derek Brunson. If I try to remember right now, I probably couldn't even remember how many injuries Darren Till's had. He's, he's had the apparently his ACL. He had his collarbone. Um, you know, he's had lots of issues. He said he wants to come back for March, which is apparently when that UFC London card will be. Um, Elliot, I'll start with you. There's been a couple of names floated about. Is there anyone you particular would like to see Darren Till come back and face um, in March? Uh, Sean Strickland, I think kind of makes sense. Mm. I think that's the one a lot of people kind of spoken about already as well. And I think that would bring out the best of Till. It's just it'd be a stand-up kind of war. And it, uh, there will be beef involved. I think there will be a bit of back and forth. And I thought that'd be the best way to get Till back into, in, into the headlock, you know? Yeah. No, I like that one. What about you, Jake? No, I agree with Strickland, yeah. Um, he has ruled himself out, I think. He said a fight until, but I could see if if we had a London card in March, like that suits Strickland mm. to come over to London and be a bit of a home wrecker. That's the what he likes to be. I think realistically, the best chance of him winning would be Uriah Hall. And Uriah Hall does want to fight him, but mm. I think if he, the best win for him would be Strickland to get his name and push himself back up there, yeah. Yeah, no, I agree with that. Yeah, I think they're both winnable fights for him. I think another one, can't really tell where he's at at the minute, but another one would be Luke Rockhold as well. Obviously, Rockhold was supposed to fight Strickland. Former champ, I think that'd be pretty decent trash talk as well. Obviously, he's a good name for being a champion. So, yeah, I think there's a few good fights for Till. Um, and obviously, the thing that those three that we just mentioned have in common is they're all strikers. And, you know, we can obviously all agree that Till can probably pretty much outstrike most people. His weakness is going to be the wrestling and things like that. So, yeah, I think there's a, there's plenty of winnable fights for him, plenty of exciting fights. Um, hopefully get him on that London card and I'll see you there. But um, next one, obviously, he's never out the headlines, Conor McGregor. There's a few things I could have picked out for this one. I don't want to talk about Conor too much, so I just picked one out. He's been tweeting plenty as always, but one of the things that he did say is that his next fight is going to be for the lightweight title, whoever that may be. I think he's probably presuming that it's going to be Dustin Poirier, and that's why he's saying that. He's sort of lining up that fourth fight. Elliot, I'll start with you. True or false, Conor McGregor's next fight is for the lightweight title. So, so false. It's just not <laughs> happening. Let's be honest with ourselves. Um, I would like to, I'd like to see him take a different route. I think um, Chell talked about it before, Chell Sonnen on his podcast, and about let's not, why not fight Jorge Masvidal at a higher weight, 170. He said he enjoyed it at 170. Or, or Diaz again. The, the money fights, but I suppose the competitor in uh, McGregor wants to be up there all the time. But hey, not a title fight, but why not around that kind of uh, ranking? Chandler, Gaethje. Really fun fights, really. Yeah. What do you think, Jay? Conor McGregor, lightweight title shot coming up next? I don't think so, but I think if Paul Ray is champion, it gives us a slim, slim chance because mm-hmm. of obviously that trilogy fight. But uh, you don't doesn't think he might be back till around June. I think he might have said the name. And I think there's a chance of another fight after this one in December in between them. So if it is, I don't know who will be champion, plus Paul Ray or Oliveira. But I, he, I know he's the biggest name in the UFC, but he really, I don't know if he can jump that queue. He's ranked about ninth. <laughs> I think it would be an uproar. A lot of fans don't like McGregor, so I think there would be a bit of an uproar if he got given that shot ahead of the likes of Gaethje, Darius and Makachev. Yeah, there'd be an uproar, but everyone would watch it. So that's, that's the main oh, thing I, the UFC I, I, I'd love it. I'd love it, but <laughs> I think a lot of people would really hate it. Yeah, and I mean, if he does fight for the title next, coming off that leg break and he loses that one, which is obviously oh, yeah. pretty possible. I mean, what's his like, lightweight record going to be? Is it going to be about one and four, one and five? So it's yeah. uh, it's a tough sell, but we'll see what happens. It's Connor. If anybody can do it, it's him. He fought yeah. Floyd Mayweather for Christ's sake, so you never know. Um, moving on from Connor, so Kobe Covington's obviously bounced back into the media. He, Put his real character on for a bit after the Usman fight. It was pretty nice to him. Said it's all love. I when I immediately watched that Kobe Covington Kamaru Usman two fight, 
I thought it was relatively close. I was obviously, you know, I agree that Usman won. But I thought it was close enough for Kobe to do Kobe and say that he got robbed and try and play off that. But he didn't seem in the mood straight after the fight. So it kept quiet, took his licks. But now he's, he is trying to say that now, which I thought might come out. So Kobe Covington saying that out of the 10 rounds at the fight, he's won six or seven of them or whatever he's saying. And, and you know, he thinks that fight is a robbery and then he'd have a trilogy. Elliot, we'll start with you. First of all, is there any interest in that trilogy? Um, and is there any truth to what Kobe's saying? Um, a trilogy? I wouldn't mind it, but I'm sure a lot of the fans would have a lot to say about it. If we see Colby kind of dominate his next few opponents, I mean, why not? It's the closest Usman's going to get to a, a tough competition, apart from mm-hmm. Shemaev, we don't know yet. But I also thought this would have been the perfect time for Colby to kind of give up his act. It, do- it doesn't need to. He's kind of won the fans over for having like two close fights with Usman. But hey, like you can't stop him. He's an mach- a, a, like, a XPR machine, if you want to kind of see it that way. Yeah, I mean, if it wasn't for the character, he probably would have been cut by now. So it's, it's too, probably too late for him to let go. But as soon as he yeah. stops the UFC, he'll be like, get yourself off to Bellator. But, um, <laughs> what about you, Jakey? Any interest in that trilogy? Um, yeah, maybe down the line. Like I said, he has to, if he could dominate the next two opponent, opponents, like a Mars Vidal and Shemaev, a win over Mars Vidal is not enough to get another title. I think he knows he didn't win that fight. That's why he did show a bit of respect at the end, because I think he knows he didn't win that fight. And he, he has to do it. He has to keep up his personality to keep... It's not like he's not talented, but that's the way people do it. That's why, like, Chael Sonnen stays so famous now, because he keeps a big mouth of his. And Yeah, I, not for now, but yeah, maybe he is. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, Steve, Amy your chicks come back into the, the spotlight a little bit. We don't hear a lot from Steve Bear, doesn't do a lot of media. And obviously he's been pretty quiet since his last fight with Nagano when he lost his belt. Um, I'll keep this question pretty straightforward. Steve Bear spoke to Ariel Hawani and he said that obviously he wants the Nagano fight next, but he'd be willing to fight John Jones. So I'll keep it simple. We'll start with you, Elliot. Would you rather you see Steve Bear, Nagano free next or Steve Bear versus John Jones? Um, John Jones because we can kind of make that sooner because of Ngannou's fighting uh, Garnet soon. Mm-hmm. I think we're going to have to wait a little bit longer. Let's let's put John, John Jones in there as soon as possible. Fair enough. Who wins that one? Putting you on the spot. <laughs> I'll probably say jo- Jones now. If you ask me before the Ngannou fight, I'd probably, just, probably say Stipe. Yeah, fair enough. What about you, Jake? You'd rather see Stipe versus Jones or Stipe versus Ngannou free? Uh, it's gonna be Steve Jones, yeah. I don't know what Jones is gonna be like at heavyweight though. Like he's so big, it might be harder for him to move. Mm. I don't know, but I would rather see it because it could be sooner. Yeah, but I don't know how soon it'll be. And I don't think Jones is gonna want that, fight, but I don't know. I think it's gonna be Jones and Garnet. Well, I don't know actually because I don't know if Garnet is gonna beat Garnet. So I don't know. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, lots of questions. Um, no, fair enough, fair enough. I think you know, one thing we can all agree on is that any of them fights, we'd all be very excited for. So it's a pretty good time for the heavyweight division because there has been times when it's not been at its best. It's not been the most exciting. There's maybe just been a couple of people at the top. Um, but I'd, I'd probably say that this is the best state the heavyweight division's been in the UFC for a very long time. So it's all good stuff. John Jones in the mix, it's good. Um, last one I'll leave you is with. Uh, springing this one on you a little bit late because, you know, it's obviously only just recently came out, but Dan Hooker, he's pretty much confirmed that he's moving down to the, the featherweight division, back to 145. Um, he told Oscar Willis that he'd be doing a test cut and then he's posted early this morning, uh, depending on what time zone you're on, that he's officially made weight. He weighed in on a scale about 146 or a bit less. So he looks good to go at featherweight. Uh, Elliot, we'll start with you. You know, just... How do you feel about that? And do you think it's a good move? Yeah, I'm, I'm so happy he's gone down a weight because I thought the matchups for him at lightweight, it doesn't help his career. Go down to go down to featherweight, there's so many possibilities. It kind of gives Holloway another like avenue to go down. I know um, Hooker hasn't kind of deserved it yet, but at least it's something to look forward to in the future. I mean, yeah, Hooker at uh, featherweight is such a such a better idea than lightweight for me anyway. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think looking at those some of them recent fights against Islam and things, 
Um, Chandler just seems he seems a bit out muscled. You know, obviously, he's quite a big guy, but he's not a physical guy. And with striking being his, his sort of um, you know his, his area of expertise and grappling not being it doesn't board well when you uh, you know the physicality doesn't match up against some of these wrestlers. So I agree. I think Featherweight's a good move. I think there's lots lots better matchups for him. Lots more strikers in that division as well. Like yeah, obviously he's already fought a couple of them, but yeah, yeah, Rodriguez is Korean zombies. Some you know Giga Chikadze, some really fun fights and um, people will stand with him. But Jake, what do you think? You're happy with that move? Yeah, I think it's probably the best decision he's made. I know he started at Featherweight in uh, the UFC and he did struggle there a bit, but obviously it's he's come so far since then. He's fought some amazing fighters in in the lightweight division. And like like Elliot said, that Holloway fight would be off the scale, I think. So, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Right, nice one, boys. Well, as we said, no, no UFC to look forward to this weekend, um, but we'll still be back every week chatting about this stuff. And uh, after this little break, there's some absolutely stacked cards. We've got Jose Aldo, Rob Font. Obviously, we've got the big UFC 269. Tons and tons of good fights, so looking forward to talking about them. Um, but cheers for joining me and looking forward to doing it again. Thank Cheers, you. Lads.